had you ever made a front door before or doors like, like before you took this one on? No. Listen to this. Can you hear that? I don't think I had ever heard anything quite like that. But come on in. This front door was made by Ken Jordan. That's my dad's friend here. And you've probably seen him in the background of some of our videos. He's often just kind of chilling, watching the work get done. He is really a neat guy. And this door is super unique. A couple years ago, we made a video touring the whole house. So you can take a look at that if you want to see more. But I want to talk about this entry first. It starts with just a forest of conifers as you drive up. And then you get to this massive brick walk. It's really wide. The brickwork has lots of neat details. And Ken did all of it himself, by the way. It's got all these interesting plants and potted trees along the sides. And the whole time you see this door with the stained glass in front of you, it is really just an experience. Allie and I are having a house built right now. And like many of you, I don't have the time or tools or the skills really to build a door like this myself. Although I would love to, and hopefully someday later in my life I can, but it is still possible to get a custom made door just like this. If you're gonna get it done affordably, you need a big shop that has all the classic woodworking tools, but then also the specialty door making tools. And then you need all the skilled craftsmen who understand how to use them. And ideally you'd want a company that's been around for a while and has a track record and a great reputation. And you might've figured it out, but that company does exist. It's called Realcraft and they're up in the Seattle area. And this door you're watching come together here is going in our house. They make custom doors. They make all the hardware to support them. They send them all over the country and they partnered with us on this project. Not only did they make us a couple doors, but they took the time to film it, which is no small undertaking. This is Ryan Rodman building our door here, and I love how tidy his work is. And I love the overall strategy. Solid wood, no veneers or layers, and with these long mortises holding the rails and the styles together. The founder of Realcraft is Don Rees, who I'll introduce you to here. And like a lot of us, he worked in a lot of different jobs, went to school, experienced lots of things, and then kind of coincidentally got into construction and carpentry, in his case, and really found his calling but from day one it's like man i just fell in love with the craft i just it was like i found my place at home and as it turns out not only did don enjoy the new career direction but he had a bit of a knack for it the aptitude obviously was there because you know before long basically i'm running the projects and showing the carpenters how i want things done it wasn't long within a year i went out on my own i mentioned earlier that it takes a lot of specialty tools to make a door but after working on this video and watching ryan put this thing together i'm not so sure if that's true the specialty tools probably make things quicker but i guarantee you it's been done with just the basics so if someone would let me know or speak to that in the comments i would appreciate it Separate from the tools and technical skills required, you gotta have a good design. Proportion, the profile of moldings, the thicknesses of the different parts, and selecting materials that will uh, work well and look good together. Maybe most importantly, a door that fits and matches with the other aspects of the home that it's being installed in. There's one design aspect to this door that was really unique and I really love it. I'll show you once it's installed. Builders have to confront design regularly and having an instinct for a good design can really set some builders apart. I wanted to do artful, soulful houses. And so you're looking for customers that you mix with well, that their vision and your vision, because you kind of got to get into their head while you're designing and you're looking for a, a similar vision or a similar output and someone that you can work with that isn't going to, you know, quote, manipulate or squeeze you too hard. I couldn't find a door. Home, it was before the days of Home Depot, but the standard doors just didn't look like they belonged in this particular house. And so I would start making the door package for the house and the trim package. So then I started building doors and, you know, at the time I didn't really think about 
where that was going to lead. Well, as you can guess, it led to more and more people calling and emailing and asking Don to make custom doors for their projects. I got to a point um, where I just couldn't ignore it anymore. It was like, okay, am I going to go down this road or am I going to go down this road? And uh, um, there you go. Well, as you can see, Don decided to go down the road of building custom doors. Now they make entry doors like this one, but also Dutch doors, pivot doors, round top doors, sliding barn doors, and carriage doors. And speaking for myself here, I had no idea what was possible in the realm of beautiful doors and what an impact they can make on a building. I did a podcast with Don where he explained what this journey has been like. I highly recommend it. I'll link to it in the description below. The design of this door started with a sketch that Ali made and sent to him. They took that and turned it into a set of plans that we reviewed with the builder. And then they sent some samples of the wood so she could actually see the color and the look of the grain. We'll talk about the wood they're using later on. And that's all it took. They got started on the door and sent it over right when we told them we were ready for it. I had asked Jesse before the door got here if he was nervous at all for installing a big, heavy, you know, fancy custom door like this. And he kind of laughed at me. He was like, uh, no, it's pretty much like installing any other door. And that made me chuckle. The reason I asked is because installing doors is tricky. I've done a handful of them and something has always gone not quite perfect. But Jesse's point was that a big door and a small door is kind of the same. You follow the same steps, you check all the same gaps and spaces and you put your level on it in the same way and so i'm gonna so drive a shin back there i'll let that screw out a little bit and if you go slow and know what you're doing okay. you should get a perfect install just like any other door so that makes sense the good thing with a house like this is that the framing is all brand new completely square plumb and true in every direction and that helps it's kind of like you're starting from a good point Sometimes on older homes, you're you're dealing with a house that's settled or maybe some strange um, material or lumber that you can't find anymore. So you're kind of starting off a little bit off balance, but not here. And especially since Jesse's the one who framed this house, so he knows exactly uh, what he's got and it makes it easier for him. Now, the original plans and drawings for this house from the designer had a 36 inch door with two small side lights and a transom across the top. And you can see it in this rendering here. It looks pretty nice, but Allie didn't love that quite as much. She thought the side windows were kind of too small to make sense. So she went with this door, which is 42 inches, no side lights, but a big window kind of in the top, which looks nice. The door is made from white oak. And if you've watched much of our channel, you probably know that my dad really loves white oak. And over the last several years, well, probably his whole life, but especially over the last several years, has kind of been collecting and going out of his way to acquire it. And it's not easy to acquire it. You got to find the right trees. Cutting them down is no picnic. And then the whole process of milling it and drying it out and, and all that, it takes a while. And it takes a lot of machinery and effort. And so it makes sense that this material is expensive and then for a door like this you know after you get a whole stack of of lumber they go through it and they pick out the nicest pieces so on this door it's all quarter sawn and there's like no knots in the door anywhere it's just beautiful and it has interesting uh, figure in the grain so it's really beautiful and now i've learned more about you know white oak over the last couple of years watching my dad cut it down and, and assemble his um, supply of it for the kitchen that he's gonna build. So I certainly appreciate this material more than I would have otherwise. And I should say, yeah, there are a couple knots in this door, one in the door and one in the jam, but I'm glad they're there. It helps keep it real.
Now that the door is in, let's take a look at the rest of this entry and I'll show you guys what we're doing. The front patio ceiling is getting covered with this tongue and groove pine stained a really soft, natural color. And then the porch itself is concrete. Allie really wanted wood, but we both kind of agreed after some back and forth that concrete is so much more practical and permanent and it's a little more expensive, but for us, there's no doubt it was the right way to go. And this was a fun concrete job to film. It's a sand finish, which adds a bit of work, but it leaves a really nice looking product. Plus the crew was really fun to film. I'm gonna share all this footage in a later video, so keep your eyes out. The patio is connected to the driveway apron with a little sidewalk. And we made the sidewalk five feet wide, thinking that the extra width would help the entrance feel a little bit more grand. Plus it would give the kids a little extra room on their scooters, like they get two lanes. The final piece of this whole entrance is the landscaping. And to be honest, guys, this is where I need some help. And I'll explain here in a minute. But first off, my dad came over with his excavator. See this tree here? This is a blue spruce. I have been just going back and forth about whether to keep it or leave it. And as you can see, we decided to take it out to open things up. And while he was here, he also cleaned up this blackberry and plum tree mess along the fence. Then I started grading out the yard, getting rid of dirt and rocks and getting everything as level as I possibly could. Then my friend Ezekiel came over who helped us yeah. spread the grass seed and get it actually planted. And he has a great touch with all this stuff. So I was really happy he was available. Now here is where I need your guys' help. I think this whole entrance needs something still to make the route to the front door feel more inviting. And that something is obviously the rest of the landscaping. So let me know what you guys would do here. I'm thinking a planter area along here with a row of some kind of plant, maybe decorative grass or lavender grows really well here. I'm not sure. And then for curbing, there's a lot of choices, vinyl, concrete, steel. I'm kind of leaning towards just vinyl because it's so inexpensive and it does the job. But let me know if you have a strong opinion on any of that. Thanks again to Realcraft for working with us on this project. If you're building a home, or if you're a home builder, especially building a lot of homes, you need to know about these guys. Just go through their Instagram. Your jaw will be on the floor. To be honest, this door they made for us is actually quite modest and simple compared to a lot of the things that they make. But for me, it's better than I could have possibly imagined. I almost can't believe we have such a beautiful front door on our house. And I should say, Jesse did a phenomenal job on the install. If you want to hear more about Realcraft, check out the interview I did with Don. I'll put it up on the second channel and on the podcast feed. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Keep up the good work. We'll catch you next time. Guys, here's that interesting design characteristic that I mentioned earlier. Check it out. Two hinges up at the top, only six or eight inches apart, and then nothing all the way till you get to the very bottom. Now, my understanding of what's going on here is that this allows these two hinges to carry more of the weight of the door. And the bottom hinge is simply resisting, you know, the door's kind of pushing in this way and it's resisting. If this hinge was in the center, like most doors, it, the door would be more like pivoting kind of on that hinge. It would still be carrying some weight, but this allows the weight to be carried more equally between these two hinges and then this one, like I said, is kind of resisting. So I don't know, Some one of you engineers can speak to that better than me, but I think it looks cool and uh, I'll take their word for it.